Hi, my name is Negev Bar. I'm a family physician and a staff member in the Department of Family Medicine in Haifa, Israel. And currently I'm the chairman of the Israel Society for Musculoskeletal Medicine. I'm happy to open this internet-based course on the theory of myofascial pain. This is lecture number one on the introduction to musculoskeletal medicine. Let's start with some pain definition and classification. According to the IASP, the International Association for the Study of Pain, pain is defined as an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience associated with actual or potential damage, tissue damage, or describes in terms of such damage. Pain classification. According to the timeline classification, we classified acute pain as any pain under three months and chronic pain beyond three months. According to the pathophysiology classification, we identify three main types of pain. The nociceptive pain, pain that arises from actual or threatened tissue damage and non-neural tissue, and is due to ad activation of nociceptors by a noxious stimuli. A neuropathic pain is a pain caused by a lesion or a disease to neural tissue to, of the somatosensory nervous system, central or peripheral. And dysfunctional pain is any pain without a known nociceptive nor a neuropathic component. Sometimes we use the term cancer pain. Cancer pain is any of the above type of pain, nociceptive, neuropathic, or dysfunctional, that is caused by cancer or its treatment. This course is about myofascial pain, which is a subtype of nociceptive pain. Pain is a global public health burden. The WHO estimates that one in five adults suffers from pain. This is a prevalence of 20% for pain worldwide. And one in 10 adults are diagnosed, diagnosed with chronic pain annually. This is an incidence of 10% for chronic pain. While pain affects all populations, regardless of age, sex, income, race, or geography, it is not equally distributed across the globe. Prevalence and incidence can widely range in different countries. In a European survey on prevalence of chronic pain, this is a huge survey published by Bervik et al. in 2006 in the European Journal of Pain, a survey for more than 16 countries, European countries, and more than 46,000 responders, the mean prevalence for chronic pain was 18%. But as you can see, Spain, Ireland, and the UK, it was as low as 12 to 13%. But Italy, Poland, and Norway, it went up to 26 and even 30% prevalence for chronic pain. In the same survey, when they checked the severity of chronic pain, they showed that two-third had moderate pain with NRS, numeric rating scale of 5, 6, 7 out of 10. And one third had severe pain with NRS of 8, 9, or 10. What about the duration of pain? Only a small minority, 4%, had relatively short pain, up to one year. But more than two thirds had what we call ultra chronic pain with 5, 10, or even 20 years of pain and suffering. This data was from the European survey, but surveys on pain in other continents showed similar finding. But chronic pain is not just pain. Chronic pain is a vicious cycle. Chronic pain comes frequently with poor sleep. Poor sleep might cause depression. Depression increases the risk of malfunction malfunction in family relation, employment, and social life. And malfunction aggravates pain. But pain can cause directly depression. Or maybe this describes more accurately the complex interaction where each factor perpetuates the vicious cycle. And this is why we see usually our chronic pain patient with poor sleep, depression, and malfunction altogether. Let's summarize. Pain in general, and chronic pain in particular, is very common, is a serious health problem. It can last many years. It affects dramatically the quality of life in all aspects. What is the etiology of pain? There are four main causes of pain. 
trauma and surgeries, cancer and cancer-related pain, spinal pain, mainly in the low back, and joint pain, mainly osteoarthritis to the big joints. As you can see, the musculoskeletal system is a major etiology for pain. If we look at the European survey again, on patient perspective on the causes of pain, we can see that more than 60% of the causes of chronic pain are musculoskeletal condition. But can we be more specific? What kind of musculoskeletal conditions? In a pain survey in primary care setup in Israel, six months cohort study in a family physician clinic, all patients with pain, almost 130 patients, mainly acute pain, 80%, 92% had myofascial pain. In a pain survey in secondary level of care in Israel and in Canada, nine months cohort study in a community pain service, almost 160 patients, this time 40% acute pain, 60% chronic pain, again 74% myofascial pain. What about tertiary level of care? In a 12 months cohort study in a hospital pain center, almost 130 patients Obviously, all, most of them are chronic pain because it's a chronic pain clinic. Also here, 63% myofascial pain. We can summarize and see, myofascial pain is the most common cause for pain at all levels of care. Treating pain is challenging. When patients were asked who treats their pain in the European survey, they answered mainly primary doctors, 70% family physicians and GPs, and 27% orthopedic surgeon. But if we look closely at the numbers, we can see they sum up to more than 150%. Why is that? Patients are doing doctor shopping. In the same survey, 58% of the patients reported they have seen more than one doctor, and 15% reported seeing more than four doctors to ease their pain. Are these numbers indicate that we fail in doing so? or the musculoskeletal medicine is a lacuna. In a WHO report on current musculoskeletal training show that most medical schools, the musculoskeletal education was scanty and not mandatory. The family physician, most residency programs had minimal training and in low quality on, muscul on musculoskeletal education. And orthopedic surgeons, they almost exclusively were trained in surgical approach, although we know that most musculoskeletal conditions don't need a surgical intervention. What about other disciplines? Physiotherapist, osteopath, chiropractor, etc. Usually they are well trained, but are high cost and low availability. The WHO summarizes and states improved education in musculoskeletal pain is necessary for all doctors. What needs to be done in musculoskeletal training? We in the Israel Society for Musculoskeletal Medicine, when we remember that myofascial pain is the most common cause for pain at all levels of care, we think that medical school should have extensive training in musculoskeletal medicine in general, and myofascial pain in particular. And family physicians and other primary care physicians should have mandatory training in the diagnosis and evaluation of myofascial pain. This internet-based course is part of this effort to achieve this goal. But they also ha should have a mandatory training in myofascial treatment skills, such as dry needling and trigger point injections. What should be the long-term goal? The development of medical discipline of musculoskeletal medicine, where other places called manual medicine or neurosurgical orthopedics. It should be an independent medical subspecialty with clinical fellowship research, teaching, and international collaboration. Maybe this is the time to mention FIM, the International Federation of Manual and Musculoskeletal Medicine that extensively promotes these goals. Take home message. What we need to remember. Musculoskeletal causes are a major etiology for pain. Myofascial pain is by far the most common reason for pain in primary care, but also in secondary and tertiary level of care. Lack of awareness or insufficient training by treating physician may cause patient to be misdiagnosed or maltreated. We, in the Israel Society for Musculoskeletal Medicine, 
offer you to join us and touch the pain. In this internet-based course, we have 10 lectures of all what you need to know about myofascial pain. History, physiology, pathophysiology, clinical presentation, physical exam, and even building a treatment plan. All lectures are up-to-date and evidence-based. All lectures are well-structured and methodology designed. And all lectures are free for all physicians and other healthcare providers. Thank you for your time.